what I'm going to do now is to rerun Myth TV to see what it requires as I did before. So um, it's just called it's all 33. I can't remember what it's called now. Uh, is it V33? Yeah, V33. So change into Myth TV, the version directory, then Myth TV unversioned. And if you remember before, I'm just doing configure. Prefix equals forward slash opt forward slash myth TV. Okay, so it's telling us that it can't find tag lib. So let's look for that in the BLFS book. And there it is, so we can use these instructions to build taglib for the system. So I'll keep that there for the moment, that directory, because I don't think this is going to take too long to build. There's no dependencies apart from CMake, which we've already got. So let's fetch the package. Um, and also I should point out, if you remember, that originally it wanted QMake when we ran um, the configure for Myth TV. So you can see that it now finds it, obviously, um, it exists. So taglib, no special instructions or options to configure, so I'll we'll just put all these commands in. Okay, so now we can install, uh, let's do it this way, taglib and that's done, shut that down, go back to this TV and rerun the configure. So now it needs sound touch. So let's see if we got that in the BLFS book, and we have. So let's install that one as per the book. So there's no dependencies. So let's do push D. Fetch the tarball. It says it expands the sound touch instead of a version directory. And the bootstrap command below fails if the AC local environment is set. So let's run extraction CD sound touch. Let's see if we've got AC local set, which looks like it might be. Uh, no, it isn't actually. So I'm not sure if that's deliberate or not. It does say if it is used, it needs to be unset. So we can just do, let's look at this switch has supports for running algorithms in parallel across several crosses pause using those in OpenMP. Um, now OpenMP is not defined as a dependency. I'm pretty sure that's a separate package. So I don't think 
we can use that. Um, and also I'm not sure which command if it goes against, if it goes against bootstrap or configure. I imagine it goes against the configure command. We can try adding it, but as I said, I don't think it's going to work. Although in my structure, I have got the built it with it, just looking over at them. Um, so maybe it's got its own uh, code to do that. So let's now build this. And that's done. Make install. And that's all complete. Is that right? No, that didn't run correctly, I don't think. That's better. So tidy up. And take that one off. Okay, and let's now go back to MythTV, rerun the configure command. And it's now complaining about Blu-ray library missing. So let's search for lib Blu-ray. And I can't find it, so this is something we need to install um, externally. So, when you search on the internet for Blu ray, um, the place you should get it from. Let's put uh, Blu ray. Put the Blu ray in. Um, yep, that's the website of www.videoland.org and we want to go to the developer section so I can't really see that there let's try projects ok, that's not there, let's try under VLC, download, that's a media player. Uh, okay, that's interesting. Well, I'll tell you what the URL is, it's probably the quickest way. It's www.videolan. Oh, in fact, the website I've written down is just videolan.org, whether that's different or not. Oh, no, it's not. HTTP S Videoland.org oh, That's strange. Falcon's trying to reconfigure that address for some reason. Right, okay, so let's try www.videoland.org forward slash developers forward slash lib blue ray dot html Oh, it keeps on trying to put this HTTP in for some reason. Oh, I see, the colon's missing. No, it's still not having it. HTTP, oh, kind of the wrong place. That's better, okay. So, yeah, you can see the true address. Uh, strange, because when I downloaded it, I put www down for some reason. Maybe I was just being lazy. Um, but anyway, it's www.videoland.org forward slash developers forward slash lib blu ray to html. 
Um, so once again, it's got a git clone command, but if you just copy the bit without the dot git and the git clone command, copy that, put that in. That hasn't worked right, has it? Yes, it has. Sorry, I thought it was going to GitHub. Put that in, and you get this web page up. Um, under master, this drop down list here. Um, select the tagged version 1.3.4 and then this button here allows you to download in various formats so download BZ2 it's the um, it's going to be a quicker download because it'll be smaller just right click copy link address and then if we push D again and do wget and paste in that. Okay, sorry. Center click, let's remember the URL. Just do right click and paste. And then that should download the Blu ray. So now we can extract it. CD lib Blu ray. And we have to do a bootstrap here. And then I did the commands configure minus minus prefix equals full slash user disable static. And I had to use something called disable bd java dot jar. So I'll show you what error comes up if you don't put that in. Uh, so it's that there it requires ant, but ant was not found. Um, actually Ant is in the build in the BLFS book but I would say um, I think BDJ is a special format of Blu-ray discs let's just have a look so I would say unless you know for sure ok let's you access bonus content on Blu-ray disc so I'd say unless you really know you need that, uh, it's probably best to avoid it, otherwise it entails installing Java and that probably, well it certainly entail installing Java and Ant and probably a few other dependencies I'd imagine. Um, we can have a quick look. Uh, yeah, and the way they do it, because we want no binaries, pre-installed binaries, you'd have to install a binary Java to install the compiled version of um, Java. Um, else to lib. CP okay, so CPIO you'd probably need. Cups you'd need. Zip and unzip. And then... I think we've got all uh, Giflib you'd need. Um, and there's potentially more dependencies off of that. So, as I say, unless you know that you've got Blu-ray discs you want to play through Myth TV, I'd avoid it. Um, and I've not installed that. Uh, I don't use Myth TV, TV primarily to play optical discs. I have done. Works fine. Um, but it's not something really... Absolutely necessary. Um, so, okay, so what we've got to do is put that disable command in that is suggested to us. So we'll put that in. And it's saying that it can't find a libudf source tree not found. So what we need to do now is to um, download another package. So I'll get rid of this libblu-ray for now. And we need to go back to video LAN um, to get this uh, UDF read package. Uh, rather than going to the menu again, I'll tell you what the location is. It's similar to this, um, which makes sense being it's the same um, host. Uh, this time we want, instead of lib Blu ray, just replace that with lib UDF 
read and again got similar pages as did before under the master click the latest version 112 and once again click this button here right click the tar bz copy the link address and in the terminal type wget and right click and paste the url so we'll extract this one now and once again we'll do bootstrap and I'll recall the previous configure remove the disable BD Java keep the prefix the same and disable static that's the way that LFS is, and BLFS is built without static libraries um, oh I did add, add in another command actually I'm not sure if it will prevent the build or not yeah, it's to use the GNU LD. So I actually added on that on because it defaulted to no. So I'll reconfigure and add that in. And then run make. And then run make install. So that's libudf read built and installed. So now we go back to lib blu ray. Once again, do a bootstrap. We want the configure command with the lib, uh, the bd java jar disabled. So it's that command there. And you can see it works now. It's found the UDF libraries. So now we can run make. And make install. Yeah. Right, okay, so that's those two installed. So now pop D back to Myth TV, find the correct configure command. There it is, there, rerun configure. And you can see it's now complaining that it can't find the zip package. So what we've got to do is to um, build that one. So what we've got libzip is what we need. So let's get rid of these tabs. We don't need these anymore. So I can find libzip or zip. Okay, yes, yeah, so I remember doing this now. Uh, it's actually not the zip program because this is like a front end. This is actually a library it's looking for. If we look back at the requirements, let's look for the lib. Zip. Yeah, you see it's looking for something called libzip, not just zip. So again, it's something that's not in the book. So we'll do a search for... Um, in fact, I can tell you the URL, it's a lot quicker. It's simply libzip.org. And this is it here. Click download on the left. I can't see where that is. So let's go to the menu, click download, and then we'll take the XZ archive because it'll be smaller. 
So 192 is the current latest version. So once again, let's do push D, fetch this package. Extract it, change into it, and to build this, I cribbed from another CMake um, instruction because it needs CMake. So we're going to make a build directory, change into it, and run CMake. Minus D, C, make. I think these got to be in capitals, actually. C, make. Build type equals release. Minus D, C, make. Underscore install. Prefix. equals forward slash user and two dots because the source is in the parent directory so let's just double check that cmake build type equals release cmake install prefix equal user ok and then run make And make install. So that's all okay. Tidy that up. Pop D back to Myth TV. Rerun the Myth TV configure command. While that's running, I'll shut this tab down. You can see it's taking a little bit longer now. It's finding more and more of its dependencies it requires. That actually looks like it's building its own version of FFmpeg, interestingly. Okay, so if we just look back now at those outputs, let's go right to the top, see what it says. Right, so it says it's missing some Perl bindings and Python bindings. Um, I can't remember them being a problem, actually. I certainly haven't got any notes that they were required. And there are any warnings, so uh, there's nothing too serious. Um, some of these aren't in the uh, BLFS book. Some are like LXML, I'm pretty sure is. And maybe these two, possibly. So um, I'm pretty sure I didn't install those. Um, FFmpeg configuration... Let's just check this. So it could be that it's not absolutely necessary to run FFmpeg because it looks like Myth TV's building its own one. Hmm. 
Miss TV configuration, right, it's found QT. It's found QMake, installation prefix, runtime prefix. Libkeck. Device support. So that may potentially be something to install again. Um, if it's needed, Firewire again if it's needed. I'm not sure if there's any Firewire stuff in the book to install. Um, again, HD Home Run, they're probably optional, all these things, not absolutely necessary. VD Power, obviously, like I said, I haven't got NVIDIA, so that's not needed. I don't know what that is. I haven't got Vulkan installed. Um, I haven't got this DNS installed. That would probably be something like, um, is it Avahi? I think it is, if that was required. So it's just the Perl and Python bindings. Yeah, I'm not too sure about them, but I'm pretty sure I didn't install them um, and things worked fine. Uh, I presume it's going to give you extra fun functionality of one in one way or another. Um, it could be just a, an API interface, something like that, possibly. Um, but the one thing I did find is that these external codecs, if these were required, they're simple enough to switch on. We've installed all of these. And this is one where I've had a bit of a problem with VPX. The library was installed. We installed it yesterday. Um, and it didn't seem to recognize it despite turning it on. So I uh, wasn't quite sure about that but as, as they're abs uh, not absolutely necessary it's uh, not too much of a problem um, so xvid we haven't installed so to enable that one we can install xvid as a final um, installation not sure why qt webkit's disabled and whether that needs to be enabled manually because we have just installed that Um, but let's do the XFID, which I believe is in the manual. Yep, there it is there. So let's install that. I'll remove this hierarchy so I can start afresh. And we've got NASM, so that fulfills the optional dependencies. Fetch the download, extract it. So the download is called XFID Core, and it expands to an XFID Core directory without a version. Uh, there's no extra commands. And now it says as root user do the rest. And that should be it, yep. 